We are continuing our study in the larger catechism. We are doing a doctrinal summary looking at the parallel chapters in the Confession of Faith uh, as we study each of the sections of the questions of the larger catechism. We've looked at questions one through five. And we've designated this study the Doctrine of General and Special Revelation. Today we return back to chapter 1 and section 6, part 3. The chapter is entitled Of Holy Scripture. Again, let us turn our attention to the totality of this section. The divines wrote, the whole counsel of God concerning all things necessary for his own glory, man's salvation, faith, and life, is either expressly set down in Scripture or by good and necessary consequence may be deduced from Scripture, unto which nothing at any time is to be added, whether by new revelations of the Spirit or traditions of men. Nevertheless, we acknowledge the inward illumination of the Holy Spirit of God to be necessary for the saving understanding of such things as are revealed in the Word, and that there are some circumstances concerning the worship of God and government of the church common to human actions and societies, which are to be ordered by the light of nature and Christian prudence according to the general rules of the word, which are always to be observed. We need to turn our attention now to the next subsection of section 6, and let us focus upon what the divines are teaching us. Again, this subsection states, and it's the conclusion of section 6, and that there are some circumstances concerning the worship of God and government of the church common to human actions and societies, which are to be ordered by the light of nature and Christian prudence according to the general rules <coughs> of the word, which are always to be observed. Now, up to this point, the Westminster divines have been driving home this principle. The Holy Scriptures are a complete rule of faith and practice for believers. Further, they have added that nothing else is to be regarded as an article of Christian faith or life, not the teaching of the church, nor the tradition of men, but only that which is explicitly or implicitly derived from the Word of God written. The Word of God is our rule. From it, we derive all of the basic principles that govern how we are to believe and act, whether personally or corporately as the body of Christ. Therefore, they are arguing that nothing is to be believed, nor is any dutiful obligation to bind the conscience of any Christian that does not come from the written word of God. However, there are issues that would come within the purview of both the worship of God and of church government, they say, from which the scriptures do not give us all of the minute details and how to handle these practical matters. In such matters, with the word of God giving the general context, a context for how to order our worship and how to govern our church, it falls to the officers of the church to supply such details through the exercise of rational judgment in light of their experience within the practicality that is, and let me use their terminology, common to human actions and societies, which are to be ordered by the light of nature and Christian prudence. Human actions and societies is an example, the divines say, through which we should also order our worship and structure our government in those details that have 
not been given in the Word of God, but within the context, so that those details do not conflict with it. But no, those three things, they have said that we are to use in seeking to determine how to bring those details of worship and church government into its existence. The light of nature and societies, the <clears throat> actions of humans, and the light of nature, and then Christian prudence. The light of nature, by the way, means rational thought. And Christian prudence means using biblical wisdom. This is where we, for example, derive our authority for the development of our book of church order. The book of church order is set forth in matters pertaining to the church. It pertains to many things. It talks about our constitution, our government, our standards. It talks about how we are to deal with officers and what we're to do to bring them into existence. They're to be examined. They don't tell us what questions to ask. Those are left to us to make that judgment. But we are to ask questions concerning the doctrines that they believe, the books that they read, how they practice their Christian religion, how they see it practiced in their life, how they see it practiced within the church. Well, the divines are saying these are ordered according to human actions. That is, what is known to work best among certain circumstances, dealing in areas of our worship and society that we would also there apply rational, sound judgment. Such societies can be understood in light of such adaptation. For example, one of the common things you'll find among the societies of men is the use of Robert's Rules of Order. Those things written as to the worship in the Confession of the BCO are binding by the word and covenant agreement among the churches. Yet each individual church is given liberty to direct its actions in further details as determined best in that particular circumstance which does not violate the Confession or the BCO. In the BCO, using the Robert's Rules, they were adopted by the denomination at its highest level, the General Assembly level, which is the legislative level. And it was determined that these were the rules we would govern the procedures of our time in meeting and how we would go forth, how we would make certain decisions, how we would determine how decisions are properly made or not made within that context. Note that these details, such as using the Roberts Rules or any other details, should be rational, say the divines, as considered among judgments of men. They are not contradictory to our confession, naturally to the word, nor are they contradictory to our book of church order. But even there, the legislative session at the highest level has not set out all of the details. There were some that were left to our presbyteries, where it was felt better that they should decide how they would order their structure of worship among their churches within their jurisdictional purview, or to establish some of the details of the government that had not yet been set forth in the book itself, the book of church order. And thus, the presbyteries have left even the local sessions with some of those same opportunities. There are many of these details we could speak about, but the principle is this. The Word of God is not a catalog of every little thing that was intended to be laid out. It developed through the propositional truths of the Word very general principles by which we were to govern our worship and to govern our church. And it is our obligation to see that we carry those out in light of things that are practical, rational, and are useful for the advancement of our cause in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Finally, that biblical wisdom that they speak of must guide these details so that there is a coherency among all the various parts. Scripture as the context the confession as doctor, doctrinal expression, the book of church order as adding many of those details in the more broad and general sense. And may not 
all of the, and it may not be all of the details, but those which the church believed we should be bound to. And we are bound to it, not because necessarily they are from the word, but we have agreed in covenant that this is what we would bind ourselves to, and it does not violate the scripture, but keeps the general rules of scripture, thus using the Robert's Rules of Order, for example. There is no command in Scripture. Use Robert's Rules of Order. There just is no command to it. But is using the Robert's Rules unbiblical? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, it is keeping with the principles that the Word of God teaches. For example, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, 13 through 14, judge among yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray with her head uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is to dishonor him? Now, in spite of the various interpretations of these verses, the principle is that I want you to get from the context of this section is he says, judge among yourselves and does not nature itself teach you? Is it not within the order of rational understanding of how things proceed? 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How then is... How is it then, brethren, whether you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Paul says, as I understand, every time you come to meet, each of you come with these various things to offer. Well, the one thing he says is, in spite of all the things that you're doing, whether commanded or not, it's not a didactic text. It is a narrative text. But the didactic is this. Let all things be done for edification. Let them have their proper end. And then in 1 Corinthians 14.40, he puts the capstone upon that principle when he says, let all things be done decently and in order. And within those general rules of the Scripture, using the rationality of man, Christian wisdom and prudence, we can rightfully look at, for example, the Roberts Rules of Order and say, here is a system of how societies can operate themselves in a way that is honoring and pleasing to God, keeping order within its house so that it may go forward and do the work God has given it to do. And so it is the divine said there are going to be some things in such detail that are not given. But within the context of the general rules, we must apply good judgment, wisdom, and how to set forth those details that we can go forth and build the kingdom of our God. And so it is. Even within the context, if you'll take the time to read your BCO, look at it very carefully. There are clearly principles that are derived within the context of Scripture, but that are clearly according to the societies of men, human actions from which we have derived principles of business, of how to order and run and govern our church and to set our time of worship in the things to God.